I am JC and today I'm going to show you how I made an interactive choose your own adventure comic using a free app called Twine. I'm really sorry this video is not about building another mysterious book, but I really want to show some of my other random projects and maybe to upload a little more than one video per year. You might not remember the original Choose Your Own Adventure books, but when I was young these books were really really popular where I lived and there were plenty of titles to choose from. I clearly remember having at least two of them. One was titled The Cave of Time, which I just now realized was the little first book in the collection. And the second one, which I still have with me because it was my favorite, was The Supercomputer. These books were laid out in such a way that after you finished reading a page, you had to go to the footer to know where the story continued. For example, here we start as with any other book on page 1. At the end, we're told to go to page 3. When we go to page 3, the page footer tells us to go to page number 7. And here on page 7 is where the real adventure begins, because on pages like this one, the reader could choose what happened to the story depending on the pages they choose to go to. In this story, the protagonist, who is supposed to be the reader, wins some sort of contest and gets a very advanced computer as a prize. When you turn on the machine, you realize it's super smart, and the manual says you should call the manufacturer in case the unit is either too dumb or it seems a little bit too smart. So, your first choice is to either call the company that built it, as the manual says, or just keep working with your new super smart computer without telling anyone. And so the story goes on, you make choices and follow the respective pages to guide the story. Some decisions kept the story going and you might eventually get to several different happy endings. Other decisions could end the story rather early after your character leaves the mortal plane in one of many tragic situations, from robot uprisings to being thrown into space. So. Everyone who read this book always kept two or three fingers in the last decisions just in case things got ugly. I've been interested in making a story like this for a really long time, but making an actual paper book in this style seems like a bit impractical. Even though my day job is to make websites, so I could have easily made use of HTML pages and links as a way to implement a clickable story like this, I still thought having to manually make an inventory of all the possible branches, connections and pieces of story would be a little bit too much accounting for my taste. Luckily, my laziness problems were solved some time ago when I read about Twine, a really, really simple and powerful tool created specifically to make interactive stories like the Choose Your Own Adventure books. This tool is totally free, you can download it on several platforms or just use it directly on your browser. Now, let me just show you for like 30 seconds how amazingly simple this is. You go into Twine's main site at twinery.org and you use this link over here that says use it online in case you don't want to download anything. You, you just click there, skip this message and there you have it. This is like your, your library full of stories. You create a new one using the green button over here. My story. And you just add it. And that's it. Here's your story and this is your first page. Let's say you here want to add a cover and that cover will take you to the first page. Uh, to create links you just uh, surround your text into double brackets, so let's say first page and there you go, the program automatically creates a page and let's say this is your one paragraph story. My one paragraph story. Over here let's copy some random text and then we will have a couple of links, one for the good ending good ending and one for the bad ending. And there you go, this creates automatically both both uh, both pages, so let's say here you win and over here you died. And that's it, your, your, your interactive story is created. Now if you want to play it, you just uh, hover on top of the page you want to play and click the play button. And this creates your HTML page with links. You can go to your good ending, to your bad ending, and you can go back with the arrow. And in case you want to export this thing and send it to, so to, to a friend, you just click on my story and you click here publish file. This creates a small HTML uh, file that contains everything, the links, the story, uh, or whatever other thing you have, and you can send it right away, and it's the exact same thing. As you can see, this was so easy and convenient that I finally decided to make a small project to get some practice with Twine, and to finally experiment with interactive narratives after thinking for so long about it. The first step was to analyze the book that had originally inspired me. 
and since I already had one at hand, I spent a couple of hours rereading some of the adventures from the book. When I was in school, I remember one of my friends used the last page of his book to make a map of all possible branches of the story so he could get to every possible ending on the book. And I did the same, so here is a complete map I made based on the book I have. These blocks over here are pages that are connected directly without any choice. And all the branches are the paths the story can take at the end of every page. I made this map because I had several questions about the structure of these stories. The first one, which is more of a rumor, is if all the endings are actually reachable. Even if the book cover tells us about 22 endings, I remember there were several rumors in my school about secret endings with no connections. At least in this case, I'm a little disappointed that every ending is indeed properly connected and reachable as advertised. The second very important issue was paid repetitions. While reading the book back in the day, I always thought that even if I took different paths in the story, I still read some parts that were the same. And indeed, turns out there are several pages that are reused in different stories. For example, you can start your read over here and then go to the right and read all this block in your first try. On the second try, you might take this path up until here and this page will take you to the start of the right side and then you could end your story the exact same way it did the first time. Lastly, I wanted to know how long these stories really were. With all the repetitions and branches, it's a little bit hard to judge just by memory. So I traced the shortest possible story, which turned out to be rather short with only 9 pages. Here's the longest possible story, which is only 20. This is of course not counting repetitions. If we take into account reusable pages, the longest possible path is still not too long, with only 28 pages until its end. As you can see, this is really not that terrible. A 9 page story is not all that hard to make, and if you add some simple branches and a couple of repeated paths, you can give your simple story the appearance of a way longer and more complicated book. Of course branching stories are a lot different from regular ones, but it's actually not too difficult to get started. In the Twine documentation you can find several links that explain very easily some common narrative structures you might want to use in your stories. Here's a couple I found especially useful and easy to understand. The Cape of Time. This is probably the idea we all have in mind when we think about choose your own adventure style stories. Here each branch ends in a different ending. The stories are simple since they don't have twists and turns, but it might take a lot of work to write every single possible choice and ending. The Gauntlet. Here the main story is basically a single main branch, just like a regular narrative, but there are some points where the story either briefly branches out and comes back quickly, or the story just stops at a bad ending, so the reader has to either restart or go back a little bit. Branch and Bottleneck. In this pattern, there's a lot more options for the player to take, but they eventually return to the main branch. These stories also have several possible good and bad endings that branch out of a single note not too far away from the ultimate ending of the story. In the link in the description of this video you can find three more patterns that explore other types of more complex narratives. It's very useful to read if you're interested in writing your own interactive fiction. Since I had never written a story specifically for an interactive pseudo game like this, I started by doing what I usually do when I'm writing for role-playing games like D&D, Pathfinders and the like. I start by making a flowchart where each node is an important event in the story, not worrying about branches yet. Then I think of the most probable choices that could be made by the players and add a branch to deal with that possibility. Since there are no players making choices in real time for my story, I could just write what I thought was more convenient, which is a very limited number of possible paths. In the end, I managed to fit all the story branches and some simple sketches for each one in three pages. I originally thought this part would take me a couple of days at most, but obviously it went way past that and took me a bit more than a week. A part that I thought was very important was to add an overworld to my interactive comic. Mainly because I love overworlds and I'm obsessed with the isometric style from games like Super Mario RPG, so I definitely wanted to make my own version. Secondly, having a hub for the player with many options to go back and forth gives the illusion of having more choices than there really are in the story. In the end, implementing the whole story in Twine, which I naively thought might take no more than a week, ended up being almost a month. And here is the final structure of my story. I wasn't specifically trying to follow the narrative patterns I showed you before, but several of them just appear organically as the story progressed. For example, in this part, we can see the branch and bottleneck pattern, where the story briefly branches out but comes back to the single point at the next important event. Or this other part, which resembles the open map pattern, where the player can go to and from these nodes in any order they want. 
or the fact that the whole story basically follows the gauntlet pattern, by having a single ending without much ultimate choice by the player. When I was making this project, I was already publishing a weekly webcomic, so I simply reused all my characters and stories. That way I wouldn't have to spend any mental energy coming up with any new ones, since the point of this project was to learn how to use Twine, not really to practice any creative writing. My webcomic was the typical autobiographical gagaday strip where I talk about my life and job. Not very original, but since a lot of us are still stuck at home, I thought it would tell a hopefully relatable story of a single day in my life as a remote worker in the middle of the coof. When I was a kid, I always thought the best part of these books were the illustrations, and I still do. So I would try to make the cartoons the main part and the text was going to be just small descriptions or dialogue, similar to one panel comic strips or illustrated books. This also helps in terms of play retention if we are going to go by game development terminology. The average person doesn't really like to read. We can spend thousands of hours reading our phones, but that's because everything is organized in tiny blocks the size of a tweet or a post in any social network where there's usually some sort of image or meme that goes along with it. So this story has the same format. It's mainly made up of images where the text is just a joke or a small explanation and not the main part. Another thing that I decided to add when I was already in the middle of drawing were some small animations. Adding some animated frames into comics was also something I had in my mind, but I never gathered the courage to delve into the offensively time-consuming art of animation. In this case though, given the medium, and since my target audience, just like me, had a rather short attention span, I thought it would be nice and useful to turn my drawings into very simple two-frame animations, which would be more than enough to add a bit of visual interest and keep things entertaining. After several hours searching through classic adventure game cover art from the 80s and 90s, I eventually decided to stick with my original inspiration. So I made a little parody of the cover from the supercomputer book. And there you go! This was a brief summary of the process I went through to finish this project. The final interactive comic is already published, you can read and or play it on the link in the description. Along with that, you can also find the link to Twine's main site in case you are interested in giving it a try. It's free, it's convenient, and you don't need any programming or coding knowledge. I'm also leaving the link to the branch map I made for the supercomputer book just in case you want to take a look and see that's not really that complicated. And that's it for today, so I'll be seeing you on my next random project.